can confidently say that I've never filmed a video like this before, nor did I ever think anything like this could ever happen. I wanted to surprise you guys with me buying a 2024 Mustang GT. It's a done deal. We are now the owner of the Ford Mustang. Look, I already got my jet tag on the key. So here it is. Now this one took me quite a while to find, and let me tell you why. One, I got this car with the Rembo option. And then two, I wanted it to have the Recaro upgraded seats. And then most importantly, the most difficult thing to try to find in this car was a six speed. All the cars come in like a 10 speed automatic and I hear they're pretty okay. To get these three things was the magic combination. There was three of them available in the nation. Three of them. But the moment I bought the car and drove it for the first time, it literally broke. What the heck? Are you serious? Check engine light. Okay, now it's gone. Do I need to throw a scanner on this thing? It's brand new out of the box, bro. Doesn't feel very fast. Now, I wanna preface this video by saying I didn't go ahead and buy a Mustang because I really, really wanted one or I'm a big Mustang fan. Street Hunter designed a brand new wide body for the Mustang that we are going to be revealing at SEMA. Because Street Hunter needed one, I went and got one. I was just gonna give it to them. I thought maybe it was a fluke or maybe I needed to disconnect the battery. So I went home for the night, didn't think much of it, reset the ECU by disconnecting the battery and went again in the morning and it still happened. Now the check engine line is hard staying on and it's like, it almost sounds like we're in limp mode now, or it almost sounds like we're misfiring. When I go to red line, like look at it, it, it look at, you see how it slows down and starts breaking up? And then we start getting a check engine line. And now I have no power. And when I have the AC running, the AC goes from cold to hot right when I get up in that time frame. So at this point, I was kind of shocked with what was going on. I took it back to the shop and I was talking with Dylan, like what could this problem be? We plugged in our scanner and saw that cylinders four and seven were both having a misfire with no explanation as to why. And then I thought maybe the night before when I went to put gas in the car, maybe I wasn't paying attention and I might have put 87 gas in the car rather than California's 91. Dylan and I went down to the local auto store and we bought some Octane Booster. Surely the car from the factory with 80 miles on it can't be misfiring, right? I filled this car up with fuel yesterday because it was out when it got delivered to me. Maybe I hit 87 rather than 91. I don't believe that's true. I've never put the wrong octane in a car ever once before. I've been driving for at least three years. 13 years. Oh my bad. It's never happened. But just to eliminate that, one thing that would create uh, misfiring could be low octane fuel. But dude, look at the side of it. It says 87 plus. Just pull. It's Stunk. No way. We can just drive to the shop with it like that. Dude, this Mustang's starting off with a rough life. I was like really excited for it. Wow, well now at reading 87, I know it can't be that. Our check engine light is gone now. Oh, well, let's see. It used to stay. We'll do a pull. Maybe the Octane booster is already, maybe it's already reading nicer fuel. I'm trying to drive a little aggressively here and shake up the <laughs> fuel tank. <laughs> get, the, get the booster just all properly filled. Oh, does Whoa, that work? Electronic e brake. It just works. Sick. It just bites it. Watch. Damn. Oh, it well, it doesn't actually lock. What up? a hazard. I love it. DOT is like, yeah. Look at this. Watch this, dumb. These cars always sound like they're misfiring. 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 Yeah. There it feels go. slow as dog. Sh it feel, that's what I was saying. Dude, I don't I don't know if it's just, it might just be the misfires and it being it has unhappy. To be the misfires. But dude, it, it feels like an SRT4. Yes, it feels very, very slow. And then when that ultimately did absolutely nothing, the car was still misfiring, I brought it down to the local Ford dealership and told them what was going on. How's it going? So I have a Ford Mustang. I bought it yesterday. It had 80 miles on it, 90 miles on it. And now I'm driving it and it's misfiring like crazy and holding check engine lights. Uh, I checked the codes and it's a spark plug malfunction and it's misfiring cylinders five and seven. I wanted to see if there's any way that I could try to see if you guys could tap into it. That's the thing. I know you guys are busy, but it'd be like. All right, so they're gonna take that car back and try to get us some information by the end of today. Well, they're starting it up and taking it right now. 
I told them I need this to be done as soon as possible, please, so we can stay on schedule. But I reached out to a few of my Ford friends and they said it could just be something like a crank relearn software or something small like that. Not a big Mustang guy, so don't really know what to expect. Here is a Ford that I have really had my eyes on for a while. This, I've never had a reason for it. A Ford Raptor Bronco. Such a cool car. I want one of these, but I have absolutely zero need for it. Same thing with the actual like the Ford Raptor truck. I really want a Ford Raptor, damn, that is sick. I really want a Ford Raptor truck, but just have absolutely no need for it. If they could tow, I'd probably own one, but they can't tow too much. Or at least they can't tow the capacity that we need. Hopefully these guys at Ford can figure this out sooner than later so we can stay on schedule and get this car all finished and built and ready to be sent off for Street Hunter. Or else we're gonna have to face the consequences and come up with a whole new plan. And worst case scenario is this gets delayed even more and our plans for SEMA become altered. That's the worst case scenario. Now those guys were the homies. I told them I needed the car back as soon as possible because I needed to film a video for you guys. Later in the afternoon, they gave me a call. It was ready for pickup. They told me that they had cracked spark plugs. The porcelain on the spark plugs had cracked. And we found that the uh, plugs were cracked. So they were cracked. Oh, like the actual porcelain was cracked. And they replaced them with new ones. Not sure how that happened. And the car was ready to rip. So I said, sweet. Awesome, we're back to schedule. Let's get to filming. We got a lot of stuff planned with this car in a short amount of days. Right as I drove it off the lot again, I decided just to floor it. And it happened immediately. So I went back to the shop, put it in the scanner again, and lo and behold, cylinders four and seven, both misfiring. Literally just picked it up, drove it back home, and it's doing the same thing again. That's five blocks. It's the same thing. Five it's down the street, I just revved it out. The moment I hit red limiter, I just did it again. Okay, uh, they told me that they found that cylinder four and seven had cracked spark plugs. So like the porcelain cracked off. What? I've only seen that happen a couple of times on our cars when we run like crazy amount of horsepower. Well, I just had the idea of taking it apart ourselves, but Dylan and Calvin are both telling me that we should do not, not do that. Do not touch, this is not our problem. I feel like you, you literally bad. bought this 10 minutes ago. What Dude, is going on? You can't go do it. Happened again. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. You fing serious? Yeah. No way. Yeah. It means whatever it is, it's not the spark plugs. The spark plugs are a reaction of something happening. It's not the spark plugs. Like, for it to do it again means that something is causing the spark plugs to fail. Now, I owned an S550 before, and this feels exactly like my S550 Mustang. It feels like everything is just nicer on the inside, but still feels exactly the same. This whole instrument cluster is really cool. The driving features are really cool. You can go into like sport and track and drag, which that's, that's all super awesome. The car play is really great. This is one of the most interesting features about the car. It's an electronic e-brake. I've seen videos online of people using this, like, an actual hydro, and I don't know the validity of what I'm about to say, but I'm pretty sure Vaughn from RTR had some play in developing this. It's really just an electronic e-brake, like as if you had a button, but I think there's a certain mode that I've seen online that can actually allow you to use this to like drift the car, which is super cool. I'm sure we'll use it at some point. All of this stuff is great. What you really have to know is that the car now makes 480 horsepower from the factory in the Mustang GT. And we have a six speed gearbox. That's one of my favorite feeling gearboxes that comes in a modern manual car. And, uh, and it was time to drag our ass back to the dealership to drop it off. See how the AC is all hot now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it just, screws everything up. Yeah, the car just like starts misfiring, pulls a bunch of power, and then the AC just gets super hot. Like I'm floored. I'm flooring it right now in second gear. Oh, now it's working again. Oh, now it's breaking up. Now it's breaking up. Yeah, yeah, I hear it. Flooring it in third. I'm flooring it in third. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Like it's just not working. When I had my S550 and Calvin and I put the Roush supercharger on there, we were having the same issue as this, this whole weird thing of like car breaking up. Completely unrelated, but it's yeah. just funny that the last time I had a Mustang, I had like a weird spark plug issue where the car would break up and now I'm having it again on a brand new Mustang. All right, now so I'm gonna go back inside. I'm gonna tell them that the problem is happening again. 
At this point, I don't know what they're gonna tell me because the car is probably gonna be gone for more than just a few hours like it was today. They're probably gonna have to do a super big deep dive to try to figure out what's going on, but we'll see what they say. So it's been two days and I still don't have my car back. I haven't heard from Ford, but I originally bought this Mustang just because I needed it for Street Hunter. I wanted to build the big body kit on this, make a big video and revealing it at SEMA. Before we did all that, I had a bunch of mods planned for this thing. We were gonna make this car super, super sick. And I only have about two weeks with the car before I have to hand it off to Street Hunter. If anyone has had any experiences with this down below in the comment section, let me hear it. I never thought I'd be making a video like this. I can't believe this is actually happening. I can't just go and exchange it for any Mustang because I wanted that specific Recaro, Brembo, and manual combo, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So I'll keep you guys updated. That's all I got. This was supposed to be a fun video of me showing you this new Mustang, and I wanted to do the, I wanted to test the e-brake and do donuts and try to drift it, but our car won't even drive. So that's all I got for you guys. I am so sorry that this is the outcome, but I'm very curious to see where this story goes. It's definitely a first for me, and I've been doing this for a pretty long time. So needless to say, pretty interesting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace out, and keep moving forward.